job woes. Now, she is the recognized small business expert, New York Times best-selling author. Welcome, Susan Solovic, back to the hard line. Always a pleasure to have you. And welcome Thank you, to, welcome to, to Florida so you can Thank sweat you. like the rest Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. <laughs> a little warm out there. You are going to speak on Thursday, correct? I am. I'm speaking at a side event and a luncheon focused on entrepreneurship, and particularly on women entrepreneurship. And we're trying to get a message across of what small businesses need to grow and be successful with the next administration. Let's, though, talk about the economy, because let's okay. be very honest here. Whether it's the left or the right, any candidate, Bernie Sanders, whatever. We are not talking about issues, and I do not hear enough people discussing, and Donald Trump, let's be fair, right. doesn't spend enough time talking about the economy, jobs, women, men, anybody. Wouldn't you just like to see them speak a little bit more about it? Because isn't that what the American people want to focus on? Right. Absolutely. So first of all, I think that there's a lot of rhetoric when it comes to small business issues. They always talk about how small, important small business is. There's very little action and very little specifics about what they're going to do. The number one concern for small businesses, men and women right now, is regulation. And Donald Trump has said he's going to get rid of a lot of the regulations. He's going to cut out entitlements, all of that sort to think but how was he going to do that I mean this has been so ingrained in our system you don't go in with your magic wand and wave it and it suddenly happens the other thing that's a big issue for small businesses and that we like with Donald Trump is his uh, perspective on tax reform whereas Hillary's going to probably be more the same Bernie Sanders would have increased taxes small businesses will see their taxes go down both personally and in their businesses as well yeah, but let's be honest most of the things a president does requires congressional approval you cannot simply simply wave the magic wand and have things exactly. happen. So is there not at least a concern among the small business community and the economy in general that while Donald Trump says a lot of the things that people want to hear and they say, yeah, go get them, get in there, get the economy straight, he can't do it by himself. Certainly, I, we t totally understand that. But the problem is you can't put Hillary in there because we do know it's going to be more the same. And if we have another Democratic president, I will tell you right now, the small business sector in this country, which was the heart and spirit of the American nation, will die. Why? Because right now, regulation is costing small businesses substantially more than large companies. And for the first time since the Census Bureau has been tracking it, it's been for 30 years, the number of small business startups is less than the start amount of small business closures by about 100,000 annually. And this is another alarming statistic. Since 2008 to 2012, the experts have estimated over 600,000 small businesses failed to materialize. They just didn't get off the ground, which would have brought an additional six million jobs to the economy. We can't continue down that road. This, com this country will never see true growth and economic recovery. So what is then one thing? Let let's get right down to it. Let's say Donald Trump does become president. He has the opportunity here to go ahead and change things. What is the one thing, that, the first strike that he's got to make to make sure that this economy picks up, that there are actual jobs being created, and the small business individual out there gets their due? Personally, I think he's got to address tax reform as the number one thing. If you can cut taxes and give people money back in their pockets, let us keep our money, not take more away from us, there will be more investment and there will be jobs created. You know, we can't have a $15 an hour minimum wage. That's going to kill small well, businesses. Wait a minute. People say, well, Bernie Sanders says, <laughs> yes, you can have that. Bernie Sanders doesn't understand business, and that's Thank what's you. wrong. Thank you. I'm glad somebody said yeah, that out I, I loud. Mean, it, that's what's wrong with Washington right now. They don't understand business. You know, when George McGovern left uh, public office, he started a little business in upstate New York or in Connecticut somewhere, and afterwards it failed. He went bankrupt. He said, I certainly wish I had known the challenges and the regulations and the issues a small business person faces. I would have been a better leader and a better candidate. Do you agree, though? with all the different things that Donald Trump is talking about for the economy. And I'm just throwing a few things out here. Let's see, we've got NAFTA, the TPP, we've also got China currency manipulation, Mexican imports. There's a lot of things in here that he says that people want to hear. But let's be honest, there's a lot of repercussions that can come back at the United States from China, from Mexico, from other countries, that while we'd like to do a lot of these things, we'd like to make the economy better, we can't. I know. And the one thing that small business doesn't like to hear is the shutting down of free trade. Free trade does help small businesses grow. There are a, a huge, significant percentage of, of small businesses import, even more and more growing globally. They want access to those global markets. They don't want that close 
slows down. So I disagree strongly with Donald Trump on that. Hillary's got the same position, so it's kind of a wash. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get a couple of phone calls in here because we have asked your opinion on this at one eight seven seven Newsmax. Lauren from Nampa, Idaho. Lauren, you believe that Donald Trump is the best candidate to handle the economy. Tell me, tell Susan, tell the rest of the country in 30 seconds why. Because Donald Trump is a, a successful businessman. He understands the economics of small business, having gone through it himself. And another thing, uh, immigration is a key factor in controlling immigration is a key factor in creating jobs. Okay, now uh, what you've said is both true to a lot of people and the way they would think, but isn't it fair to say, Susan, that Donald Trump's never really run a small business in his life? He hasn't really run a small business, but he understands the nuances that business people face. So he gets it. And no one else in Washington right now, I shouldn't say no one else, but the oh, majority... Oh, fair. Go ahead. You know, and at least say 98%. You're good. And I also understand that he knows that we've got to get government out of our businesses. This patriarchal attitude that they know how to tell us how to run our businesses better than we do is ludicrous. And that's why we're seeing so many small businesses fail and not thrive. Here comes the other side of this. Rich in White Plains, New York. You don't think Donald Trump has any economic plans. Well, wait a minute. He's got him. I've got him sitting right here in front of me, Rich. He says that he knows exactly how to take care of China, Mexico, and all the different trade organizations and to make America, he, he keeps saying it, make America strong again. Hello, Ed, and hello, Susan. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we heard the most uh, from Mr. Trump is how he is going to bring jobs back from other countries. Now, with regard to manufacturing, that's just not going to happen. We have already globalized. We started globalizing 50 years ago, and there's no way we're going to compete with the labor force of Mexico, India, China, Vietnam, and countries of, uh, of that sort. Okay, let's, let's talk about that for a second. And Susan, that comes down to the small business operator here who has an opportunity to do that. Let's be very frank here. When it right. comes down to China, most American manufacturers send the goods overseas to China. Right. They get manufactured there, and then they come back. It's not as if everything just comes from another country. Right. A lot of it does start here. It does, and the point to make here is the fact that we live in a global economy now. We can't be isolated, and in order to compete effectively, you've got to be able to hold your costs down. And Thanks to the unions in the United States, it's impossible to do that. So we can't be competitive if we force those things to be kept in this country. Let me talk about something else here, a couple of minutes that we have left. You are going to be speaking in Cleveland. Yes. It is probably going to be the most protected place on the planet next weekend with I what is going so. on security wise. Are you scared? I am scared, yes, Ed. I'll be very honest with you. I actually said no originally when I was uh, asked to come and speak on behalf of small business and women entrepreneurs. Um, I know some people who have been on the FBI uh, Terrorism Task Force, home secure, Homeland Security, and they are all extremely worried that something serious is going to happen. So, you know, I'm taking uh, faith in my hands and saying, well, I guess if it's my time, it's my time. But it, it, what is happening in this country right now is scary. It's like living in a third world country almost and we can't be safe anywhere. We shouldn't be afraid, but unfortunately they're making us afraid. There is another side of that, about 30 seconds I have left here. There's a lot of people, big name people, who will not speak. They right. do not want to be associated with Donald Trump. You're okay with that? I am okay with it, Ed, because th of this reason. It is stupid for them to act that way. And I'm going to be real honest and blunt about it, because here's the thing. You're going to act that way. What do you want to do? Give Hillary the keys to the White House and escort her in? We can't allow that to happen. This is our choice. The people have chosen it. He got the momentum. You know what? Buck up, swallow it, and, and show up. You're not a fan, then, of those people, the Never Trumps, who swear that they still have an opportunity Never. and they're going to shut this down in Cleveland. No, it's, it's wrong. It's just wrong. And if they do, as I said, you can put Hillary in the White House right now. She can give her the chair to the Oval, key to the Oval Office, and we're done. Oh. Uh. <laughs> There's a lot of conservatives who would not want to see that happen. Matter of fact, they're having right. small strokes right now as oh, we speak. Oh, absolutely. We can't have it happen. And that's why I don't understand that kind of an attitude. I love the Bush family, but why aren't they stepping up to the plate and supporting what the people have chosen? We're all out of time, Susan. All it's right. always a pleasure. Thanks so Thank much you. for stopping by. I'm sure Thank we'll talk you. to you again. Stay with us. We'll talk a little bit about Bernie Sanders and more with the political animal and your phone calls when we continue here on The Hardline.